I would, I would go over this morning. I woke up at about 3 a.m. I couldn't sleep. I've been so concerned about all this. And I'm somebody who's always been able to sleep like a dead king, you know, just never getting up again, basically. Firecrackers can be going off outside, helicopters, whatever, I don't get up. And uh, I woke up at about 3.30 and couldn't go back to bed. So I guess right now it's kind of like the evening for me, but I'll be up till late tonight working. And I was just thinking about how much danger society is. I'm going in and looking at my children asleep in bed and the lab was sitting there on the couch looking at me, wondering why I was walking around and waking it up. And then I went at about 5 a.m. and said, oh, I can't go back to sleep. and started reading news and I saw the people on YouTube and I would go to their websites and they were real people. They were concerned about Miley Cyrus or concerned about whatever the latest hype was. And I would, I would go to their YouTube channel to see if they were a real person and not a sock puppet. Sometimes they are. A government or corporate a person there distracted and, and uh, uh, you know, basically showed dissension as the Pentagon and CIA admits they're doing domestically now under Obama's orders. That's all public now. And they were real people commenting on petty things, uh, obsessed with you know, being stupid, obsessed with not caring, kind of that attitude, you know, that spirit of uh, nihilistic foolishness of eat, drink, and be morons for tomorrow we die. But a nihilist knows tomorrow we die, at least. These are beyond nihilists. They, they worship at the altar of being ignorant and then attacking and laughing at those that are informed, intelligent, and virtuous. And I realize they are jealous inherently of serious people. They are jealous inherently of people that care and want to make the world a better place. That's really what it is. And, and, and of course, 96, 97% of people were upvoting the videos, but I just use it as a sociological study of the people that were making jokes about it, going, you know, you idiots, there's not going to be any nuclear war. You know, go in your basement and, uh, you know, do this and that to yourself. Ah, ha, ha, you morons. Uh, there's no threat. Well, let me tell you, there's a threat to the people in Syria, the estimated 200 plus thousand, most of them civilians, killed by Al Qaeda. That's the little bullshit, kids man. murdered in front of their parents. The dads made a suicide bomb or their whole family's killed. The church is blown up. The Coptic uh, priest, the Catholic priest being murdered. Uh, the the burning up, cities. Man. It's kind of like if your neighbors got a, uh, a you know bankruptcy, out of work, having their house repossessed, it's a recession. But if it's happening to you, it's a depression. You know, this is a real thing happening over there. And, and, and they're making jokes about that. And they make jokes about videos showing dead kids. Those people are fucked up. And they think it's funny. And then they make jokes about all these experts we have on saying this could spur World War III. They think it's funny. We barely have stopped World War III at least three times on record. The most famous, of course, is the Cuban Missile Crisis, where it came within minutes of both sides blasting each other off the map. And there are all sorts of genetic engineering, open air projects with crops that are already causing horrible degenerative diseases in the human population. The cancer rates are already up on average over 3,000%. Pediatric on average over 10,000%. Some are up hundreds of thousands of percentage because they didn't exist before. I mean, go look at the numbers. We're already in a crisis. And I realized I had this epiphany at 5 a.m. sitting there reading all this that it's it's like mass mental illness. The elite have what these people have. They don't think there's any genetic engineering with all these gene guns creating thousands of new mutations a day all over the world. They don't think they don't think any of that is a danger. They don't think that fluoride in the water is bad. You know, there's all the Harvard study showing it's brain damaging and giving them cancer. They don't care about the IQs physically dropping. It's not just education. We're dumber. We're poisoned. They don't care about forced abortion all over the world under the UN. They don't care about eugenics and forced sterilization going on all over the U.S. on record currently. They don't care if their neighbor gets tasered to death. They don't care if Detroit goes bankrupt. They don't care if some company goes under. They always go, well, why do I care? I don't work there because it affects you, moron. We're all interconnected. These people just don't get it. They're totally disconnected from reality.
And then we're here trying to stop World War III as best we can. Not because we want to be heroes, we want to have a future. Because they all say, oh, the heroes are going to save us from World War III. You jerks are always saying there's going to be doom and gloom. No, we've got hope. The world loves their grandchildren. Many generals in NATO, in our military, speaking out and getting in trouble for it, saying this is a horrible idea. It could cause World War III. People that really know how things work are very concerned. And to sit there and watch you people make jokes when they could extinct this planet is absolutely outrageous on so many fronts, it makes my head spin. That there are so many serious threats, incrementally to the species with the soft kill systems, with the ambient background tyranny and police state being turned up, but all of that even pales with, with, with the thermonuclear threat, the genetic engineering threat, all of this stuff that's already causing incredible problems. But because the media doesn't make a big issue out of it, the sheeple tend to think it's all funny. Or even if the media does cover it, they still just laugh at it until they get diagnosed at 25 with cancer. Until their 18-year-old girlfriend gets diagnosed with stomach cancer or brain cancer. I mean, everybody I know has young people in their family dying right now of cancers that were unknown 50 years ago. And I know exactly where most of them came from. SV40 that's in most of the vaccines, a bioweapon virus they developed back in the 50s, and it's, it's the old reliable. Taken out of cancer patients, out of immortal cell lines. Zombies and people aren't real, but individual cells can be literal zombies. You cannot kill them except with fire. And they inject that into all of us, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I am sitting here, look up immortal cell lines if you think I'm joking. This is the type of stuff that they're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is combining viruses then with apes and then, and then injecting it back into us. It is, it is unspeakable what's already going on, but even the globalists that are a bunch of lovers of death understand the hot fire will consume them. They're not going to get out of what they're going to do. They're not going to escape it. They're not going to get out of this. They say God destroyed the earth with water, the next time will be with fire. Will God let our own evil rulers do it to us as the hand of judgment? I don't know, but I know this, I'm gonna work to stop it and to warn people about what's happening. Yeah. But it is sheer madness that this spirit of not caring, used to if a reactor was melting down or leaking, they would freak out, fix it, it'd be a big deal. Now 91% of reactors, look it up, International Atomic Energy Agency admits, 91% of the 400 plus reactors are, are leaking deadly uranium and plutonium and other byproducts all over the world. They just don't care now. They've now all over the U.S. turned the big alarms off because it scares populated areas. When they off-gas radiation, they used to, by federal law, have alarms. Get to safe zone, radiation leak, radiation leak. They've turned them off now. Look that up. Oh my gosh. Now they've admitted that Fukushima has been leaking the whole time worse than they told the public. That's out in the news today. And, 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 and people joke, they go, oh, you ought to be thankful for the radiation. Oh, it's no big deal. Oh, it's healthy for you. The Japanese government, smile, it'll make it not hurt you. I mean, I'm not joking if you're a new listener. We played that video last week and that audio for radio listeners. And I realized these are people who are so self-centered and so nihilistic that then once you're like that, you don't care about anybody anymore and you, you don't have a, a feeling of community and kinship with your ancestors and with your current family and your children and then with those to come. That feeling of humanity, I'm going to die. I won't always be here, but my great-great-grandchildren will. Wow, imagine what they'll see and do. And I love them. I want them to exist. I, I, I have this shared connection to the past, the present, the future. My humanity, my spirit cries out against this. The butchering of the genetic code of the planet, the vandalization of the human genome, all the horrible things, DARPA coming out with an extra chromosome in humans, and, and they're already mixing humans with animals so they can say they don't have rights and then harvest their organs so technically there's no human clones, they've just had human animal clones for 25 years, you know, and oh by the way we didn't tell you, ha ha ha. I mean we're in a Buck Rogers science fiction crazy land and then I'll get pulled over by some young rookie cop 
come over. You were going 10 miles over. What's in the car? You do drugs? Uh, how you doing, Alex? Uh, you know, ha-ha. <laughs> You're kind of a kook. I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of a kook. I know all his programming. I know his his whole mindset. I know everything he's going to basically say. He'll never really develop. He's on a power trip with petty power that someone with real power would be ashamed to abuse. And meanwhile, I know he's being injected with bioweapons when he gets vaccines. So is his whole family. I care about him, but I can't help him. He's gone. He's on a power trip. It's over for him. You know, it, it, it just comes to the point of... Rachel Maddow, I don't hate. I don't hate her. I just know she's some narcissistic power tripping person up there that's part of the whole fake reality they project to keep people from ever realizing what's really going on. But in all of this, in the horrible news, that until 1990 they wouldn't let troops use DU, but they did after. And, and why do I mention that every week? Because every Pentagon report by their scientists said this will kill whoever uses it. It ignites in the barrel, you breathe it, it's, it'll take decades off your life any time you use this. This will kill most people that are around it by their 50s. They're going to have failed kidneys where it precipitates out, lung cancer. Do not use this. And they said, okay, let us, let us have it deployed on the Eastern Front in case the Russians ever tend to one superiority pour across so our troops will have super bullets in their 50 cows and stuff to take out tanks. And the scientists said, don't even do that, it's mission creep. Sure enough, it was deployed by the 70s in Europe, never used, couldn't even use it on shooting ranges. Now it's used on shooting ranges everywhere. Now there's, just don't worry about it, don't even wear a mask when you use DU, boys. Don't even wash your face. I mean, it's a death sentence. That's the same thing. Oh, Alex, genetic engineering's not going to hurt us. Oh, there's not going to be a nuclear war ever. <laughs> I mean, it's this attitude of maniacs. And then you go to the airport and there's some, you know, minimum, well, the wood, they're not minimum wage, they're like 50, 60 grand a year or whatever, power tripping person who couldn't get a minimum wage job acting like you're a terrorist. They've had some eight-hour course where they can read your mind. They can't even read the back of a cereal box. S staring at you on an imperious power trip. And it's just a stupid victim. And you want to warn them. So now I do. I go, the government staged 9-11. This is all a fraud. The government ships in on all the narcotics. And they go, please, sir, just no standard for you. Go on through. Because then suddenly the power trip's over. The game's over. The wake-up call is there. I mean, I cannot sit there while cops go around acting like there's terrorists everywhere and the TSA wants to stick their hands down my wife's pants, or my children's for that matter, so I can't fly anywhere with my family while the government runs Al-Qaeda. I mean, it makes me want to throw up. They think we're so stupid, they have chemical attacks in front of us and uploaded to known jihadi YouTubes that have been up for years. Hello, 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 all that stuff, oh, be loud, no, firing them at, at, at the Syrian troops. And our government goes, it doesn't matter if that's out. We'll just go with it. We control the press. They won't report it. We'll just ignore Infowars.com. We'll just ignore WorldNetDaily.com. We'll just ignore right. DrugsReport.com. Yep, we'll just ignore anybody that covers this. They don't even care that everybody, but here's the good news. 91% in a major poll. There's a bunch of others coming out. None of the polls have more than 15% support here in the U.S. for this atrocity. You have lost even the sheeple. And so with all this bad news and scary news, everybody deep down understands we're all in danger. Everybody can feel it. If you've got any guts, any spirit, any discernment, if you're not a complete selfish moron, when you're selfish, folks, you lose your soul. Uh, and by lose your soul, it starts shrinking, it starts dying. Your shadow gets taller than your soul, to use the old old English saying, where, where, where you shrink in and become more and more self-centered and mindless like Gollum until you don't care about anything but your own little mental illness. But when you start caring about others, that's when your mind opens up because now you are a human. And they don't ever want you to get to that point. That's why they want you dependent, unhappy, plugged into your television set, being brain damaged by the globalist. Now, I haven't even gotten to the huge stack of news yet. I'll do it after the break. But I want to go out to break with last year, the House and Senate both had these hearings saying to the Secretary of Defense Panetta, you have to get approval to attack a Syria. And they said, we're not going to get it from you. Well, now Congress is saying you will get it or we're going to impeach. Let's go ahead and play that clip. You know, again... Uh uh, our, our goal would be to uh, to seek international permission, and uh, we would 
we would come to the Congress uh, and inform you uh, and determine uh, how best to approach this, uh, whether or not we would uh, want to get uh, permission from the Congress. Uh, I think those are issues we have to discuss as we decide what to do here. Well, I'm almost That's a coup. breathless about that. That's a coup right there. Because what I heard you say is we're going to seek international approval and then we'll come and tell the Congress what we might do, and we might seek congressional approval. They should be arrested well, right I'm on the spot. to you, that's a big deal. When you agree, uh, you've served in the Congress. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't when agree. you agree that that uh, would be pretty breathtaking to the average American, so would you like to clarify that? But I've, uh, I, I, you know, we, I've also uh, served uh, with Republican presidents and Democratic presidents who has all, always reserved the right to defend this country if necessary. But you, before we do this, you would seek permission of the international and he says no. authorities. If we're work, if we're working with an international coalition, we'll be right back. With NATO. You hear that? They say they get their orders from NATO, ladies and gentlemen. Israel calls up. All right, guys. Uh... That's, that, that's some pretty fucked up shit that's going on, man. Uh, I'm going to watch the rest of this. Obviously, I can't record much more of it with my camera. In fact, I don't even think my camera's fully pointed to the TV. Oh, I guess it was. Anyway, whatever. But uh, I'm going to have a link in the description of this video so y'all can go and watch it for yourselves. Because I think it's like two hours long or something. But uh, I watch them every night and whatever. I'm going to finish watching this, the whole rest of it. Everything, but uh, like I said, though, in the description of the video, I'm gonna put a description, uh, a link, link, sorry, yeah, tongue tied, a link to this video right here so y'all can go and watch it. And yeah, so be sure to check out that link in the description. This is a country where the Secretary of Defense can go on TV and tell the American public oh, that this is about freedom, it's not about oil. And nobody questions him because they don't want to hear the answer because it's a lie. <laughs> you should have seen the look on the Attorney General's face. <laughs> did, did he give mm -hmm. his <laughs> checks and balances speech? <laughs> this is about evidence and the truth. <laughs> and then you just said to him, Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. The truth is what I say it is. <laughs> you know, you got to be out of the country in the morning and going to Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, well, we're having a... <clears throat> Having some problems with the locals. We have our personnel on the ground ready to neutralize the problem, but uh, well, they've requested you. It's solvable. <laughs> they requested you. That's my guess. States Senator. Exactly. 